at the National Arena in the capital, Kingston. The Jamaican people mourn the loss of yet another of their reggae superstars, Peter Tosh. This is Plymouth Avenue in the suburbs of Kingston, Jamaica, home of reggae superstar Peter Tosh. On the evening of Friday, September 11th, three gunmen entered Tosh's residence in what appears to have been an attempted robbery. Before the evening was over, two people had been fatally shot and a third died later in hospital. In the house that night were Peter Tosh and his common-law wife, Marlene Brown. They were entertaining drummer Carlton Santa Davis, a friend, Michael Robinson, and herbalist, Winston Doc Brown. Two other visitors were expected. Jeff Dixon, the popular local DJ known as Free Eye, and his wife, Joy. Marlene Brown picks up the story. Friday night at about 8 o'clock. I was expecting Free Eye and his queen, Joy. They were both coming over to spend the night with me and Peter. While waiting upstairs, I hear a knock at my gate. I was now upstairs with friends and one of Peter's musicians. I said to one of Peter's brethren, Michael, to go downstairs, let in Free Eye because I'm expecting Free Eye and Joy. Michael now go downstairs, go through my door, saw one of Peter's friends coming through the gate, but dogs them rush him and rush back right through the gate. I saw that it was not free eye, but it was a, somebody who visited the yard regularly. Who was that somebody? A brother named Lepo. So he being a regular visitor now, I backed off the dogs and told him and his friends to come in, which they did, but, and enter in this reception area. Two of them pulled guns and said, where is Peter? Let's lead them upstairs, march upstairs. I mean, enter the living room here right now. They tell everyone, face down. And we all responded, face down. Then I said, tell one just come on. I said, Peter, I said, you, you got dead tonight. You know, but I said, nothing. Be come for kill you. I read one come over to me and say, say, yo, you got dead tonight. So, oh, nobody say, nothing. Just give me all the US dollar when they bring come. Because I'm not killing them, but give me the US dollar first. So, we said to them, say, we don't have no money. We just come down, all we have is $200. U.S., that's all Peter had in the house. So Peter gave them the 200 U.S. dollar, tell them to take anything they want, search the house, take anything because they don't have the money, which Peter never had the money. Them search the house, them have us there 15 minutes, them tell us to belly it. No, all of us go down home belly, man, because I never want to see them face, the other two guys. One of the gunmen, Dennis Lobon, known as Lepo, was a frequent visitor to the house since his release from prison. Then Lepo him start to talk and say, you say you Marlene, it's you cause it's in a Marlene from Peter, they with you. Peter used to come at jungle, come man, bad man. And now you make Peter stop it. I say to a damn lie. Everybody know that Bob Marley used to mind bad man, but not Peter Tosh. Peter Tosh is not that type of man. So not because now Peter Tosh live with a woman when the one come to us things say use me as a pastor. We say Peter don't want money, you know, because that's what he wants. He always come and want Peter to support him because he walk to every musician he are looking for support. Just like Peter Tosh house. Which I don't like him, so I always encourage Peter not to allow this boy to come to the house. Because I just don't like him. In the middle of this tense situation, Free Eye and his wife Joy arrived at the front gate. One of the gunmen let them in. So Fredo stand there and so we started first, belly to like them. So Fredo started looking at space. 
Because I never realized and I couldn't believe what he was seeing, you know? So Fred just stand up shock when the moon. So I say, Fred, please, go down. It's something real. Go down. Fred, go down. I tell Joy, I say, Joy, come over this side. Come over to me, because I was now in the dark. So I tell Joy, I said, come sit down beside me in the dark. Fred, I know, dark. Peter was more like in the light, you know, to the stairs. And the seven of us lying on the ground there. Still constantly asking for the money, US dollars or the chest that we have there and then we're there. Peter told them that they could search the house and take anything that they wanted. Anyway, they still insisted. And one of them now said, take, take the machete now and said, well, let him go and chop off Peter's head. Sister Marlene showed to him that he can't do that. And it's like one of them now starts to say, um, you know, come and just deal with our come for deal with, like, you know. We had to argue with the money. We don't argue, argue with the money. You know, we just deal with our come for deal with. And then the fire, the uh, open fire, the fire, single shot first that caught Marlene in her head. And then fire two more shots at Peter in his head. And then they just opened up a barrage of shots on us lying on the ground. There was a piece of black furniture right beside my head that gave me my head a dark look. It picked up five. My mother before pick up all of them. So when them things to me, they them stop fire. They don't just turn them start fire again. Watch me, kiss them in a move, then was turn upon Peter. Bubba the boy. They start turning, shot everybody in circle. Go right, roll. So I just stand down there because I feel a bullet go through by head. But I feel like it come through. So I said to myself, say, no, something is since I can't trust, I now move. I can wait till I move off. Because when I'm shot, them never move. Then wait a couple minutes, see if nobody does move, because nobody never make a sound. So I said to myself, say, wait, everybody must have found dead like me. So I wait until I hear like bike start up. I turn the light, I see Peter in a pool of blood, Fred in a pool of blood, Doc in a pool of blood. Doc Brown was already dead. Peter Tosh died that night in hospital. Free Eye died three days later, and the other four were hospitalized with various injuries. Where did you receive shots? One in the head, one in the back, and one through the leg. Do you believe robbery was the motive of the shooting? No, they just used that as an excuse, because they couldn't just <clears throat> come on my people feel that like they were sent. I don't care. I know they were sent. Because the order that they came in, that Peter, you're there tonight. Me come for kill you. Them come for kill me. Them words they will never forget. Peter Tosh, the stepping razor, the rebel, the toughest, was given a state funeral made possible by those whom he so uncompromisingly opposed. He finally succumbed to the violence of the concrete jungle which nurtured him. Like Bob Marley and Carlton Barrett before him, he could not quite shake off the culture of blood and fire which surrounds reggae music. He sang about it, practiced it himself, at times idolized it. Even in death, Tosh was authentic. Peter Tosh was one of the musical giants of the last 20 years. He was a part of the original Wailers, which consisted of Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, and Bonnie Whaler. When the group became known as Bob Marley and the Wailers, because Bob Marley began to have individual star status, and eventually broke up, it is a tribute to the star qualities of Peter Tosh, that he too was able, in addition to Bob Marley, to make the international music scene as an outstanding reggae artist. When Bob Marley died, Peter Tosh inherited his crown, so to speak, as the king of reggae, and he was widely proclaimed across the world. 
What has Jamaica lost by his death? One of the architects of reggae music. I mean, when you think of the role of that trilogy or that triumvirate of Mali, Neville Livingston, Bonnie Wheeler, and Peter Tosh representing the music, it just means that the pantheon now rests on just one column, that of Bonnie Wheeler. So it's like a whole chapter of the music is falling away with his and Bob Marley's death. I ranked him among the greats, along with Bob Marley, Jimmy Cliff, Toots Hibbert, um, the poets of utterance, prophets of the people, if you like, who had a deep insight into the reality of contemporary Jamaica and spoke out about the endemic injustice and lopsidedness of a society that is yet to liberate itself totally from colonialism and slavery. And um, he had a studied irreverence for the society, and that was good. That is in the hallowed tradition of dissent and resistance. He was a latter-day maroon. Um, conducted a kind of guerrilla warfare against an unjust society. Kept in touch, naturally, with it, but under the cover of art, music, ambushed it, as though he were forcing it into decency and a particular kind of sanity. Um, we are going to miss him greatly for this. Tosh was the supreme lyricist of the radical tradition in reggae music. His was the clarion call to revolt, to revolution, to civil disobedience. Stand up for your right now, brother. Get up, stand up. Don't give up the fight. Man, don't tell me heaven is under the earth. You are a duppy and you don't know what life is really worth. It's not all that glitter is gold, and half the history has never been told. And now we see the light, we gonna stand up for our Come on, get up, stand up. Well, Peter was a great man to Jamaica in general and, you know, the rest of the world. And he really taught us young youth a lot, you know, through his music. And we miss him a lot. Everyone must give them speech about him still, you know. I'm sure they kill a man like that as a black man. We are stand up for righteous people, you know them way there? No one feel it for him still, you know. We are black people and African, you know. He believed every word he sang. He wasn't one of those people who just make up some words. He believed in everything that he did. Uh, so his music was more on the, the militant side. Uh, you know, he's a protest singer. Well, Peter absolutely believed that the system was corrupt. And he was fighting against this. But underneath all of this, he was a warm and gentle, kind person. Tosh, I always thought, was significant, not only because he really was a fine musician, but more significantly because I think there was an integrity to Tosh's anger about injustice. I think that no matter how famous he became, no matter what he earned, there burnt within him this indignation about what is wrong. Peter Tosh's indignation about injustice was signed, sealed, and delivered to us as a legacy in that seminal composition, Equal Rights. <laughs> 